Hi, Pisces. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for April of 2021. Well, if this is your sun sign and you missed your annual birthday reading this year, it's not too late to get a lot of benefit from a birthday solar return reading. And I advise that you schedule it as soon as you possibly can so that you can get into your year uh, knowing what is coming and, uh, and able to respond to it and uh, get in the driver's seat about it. And you'll find a link to help you do that in the YouTube description below. Well, Jupiter is moving through Aquarius this year, uh, right here in your 12th house, or if you have late, if you are a Pisces riser, and that's why you're watching this horoscope, if you have late Pisces rising, it may be in your 11th house. I'm going to say a little bit about each. Jupiter brings growth, expansion, confidence, and joy to whatever area of life it's traveling through. In the 12th house, this is actually a place where most planets don't like to be, but Jupiter loves to be. This, uh, when Jupiter is in this house, you can feel like angels are watching over you. You can feel like you have some kind of luck that was just spritzed right into the air uh, and that it's just um, that you're surrounded by positive metaphysical influences that you couldn't put your finger on, but they're feeling pretty good. And, uh, and that's really nice. If Jupiter is actually in your 11th house, then you've been experiencing some luck with the groups that you hang out with. You've been growing community, you've been growing yourself in community, you've been discovering tribe, and you may be feeling really good about the people that you've surrounded yourself with. You could find out more about precisely what Jupiter is up to in your chart and how you can really take advantage of the luck and opportunities that Jupiter brings uh, by getting a reading and also by checking out our 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel where you'll find um, a video about Jupiter and Aquarius. Well, Julia, I know you've got some news about Mercury, Venus, and Mars for the Pisceans of the world. Take it away. All right. Hey there, Pisces. I'll begin with Mercury. That's the planet of mentation, also the planet of communication. And at the very beginning of the month on April 3rd, it's going to be moving into your second house. A lot of stuff going on in your second house this month. So second house is the house of values. It's the house of your possessions. It's also the house of your money, your income that you personally make. So with Mercury coming into this house, you could be spending a lot of time thinking, also communicating, about money and possessions in your life, the possessions that you own and that you love. With Mercury, sometimes we're strategizing around our possessions, um, maybe thinking about how to, you know, whether we want to get that car, whether we should take on those car payments, for example. Um, and then Mercury, since it's moving so fast this month, on April 19th, it's going to also jump into your third house, which is a natural fit for Mercury. The third house is a lot about communication. Um, also, it can represent your siblings and neighborhood, too. Um, uh, so for the rest of the month, when Mercury's in the third, wonderful, wonderful transit for um, any type of writing that you need to do, whether you're doing stuff for your blog or you do writing for work or whether you're in school and you need to churn out a lot of homework. Wonderful, wonderful transit for that. Also a great time for learning new things as well. Then Venus, the planet of art, beauty, relationships, begins the month also in the second house. Again, that's the house of money and possessions. So Venus is adding a little bit of luck uh, into your second house matters. Uh, it's a wonderful transit if you need to negotiate money with anybody. And you might also be feeling like spending some more money in your life, especially on things which are Venus uh, related, like uh, beauty items, luxury things, uh, art stuff, that kind of stuff. Uh, then on April 14th, Venus is also going to be going into your third house. Uh, third house is the house of communication, so she'll be adding even some more diplomacy into your communications. If you're doing any creative writing, this is a really, really wonderful time. Um, and since the third house does represent our neighbors and siblings, it's a great time for getting along with those people in your life as well. Mm -hmm. And then Mars, the planet of action and activity. Um, it starts the month in your fourth house. This is a house of family and home. Wherever we have Mars, we can run into some conflict. So, you know, things might be a little bit spicy on the home front, maybe with your parents, maybe with the people that you live with. But it is a great time to get a lot of things done at home, like if, to expend energy and the home front and get through all those little projects that you've been planning. 
Then on April 23rd, Mars is going to be going into your fifth house. And this is the house of children. It's the house of fun and diversions. Um, so if you do have any children, then you might run into also a little bit of conflict with them at this time too. And um, wherever we have Mars, we can also be a bit more competitive too. So if you play any games, if you're in a sport, if you, if you just kind of play trivia with your friends, you could be feeling extra competitive during this time too. Yeah, that certainly is very possible. It's good to know about these things so that one can, you know, behave well. Uh -huh. we, have, we have two moons to talk about. <clears throat> one of them <clears throat> is a new moon in Aries happening on April 11th. And that is happening in your second house, which is, <clears throat> again, that house of finances, of money, of body, of food, the things that ground us. And that moon has a lot of charm built into it. We're calling it assertive, but also relatable, which is actually, I think, great news in your second house because you could, it being a new moon, plant some seeds that will enable you to, um, to bring in more money, raise your income, um, fill your nest egg, um, and, uh, and to be able to you know, assert your will in the arena of your money um, and to do it with so much charm that you kind of get your way. <clears throat> so that's pretty nice. Later in the month on the 26th, <clears throat> we have got a full moon in Taurus and Scorpio. The moon itself is in Scorpio opposite the sun in Taurus, which is hanging out with Uranus. Uh, this is a moon that also has a lot of harmony. The moon connects harmoniously with Vesta and also Mars. But there is also some stress and tension built right into the fact that it's a full moon in the first place and in two signs that are really known for their stubbornness. <clears throat> We're calling this one focused obsession balanced with calm objectivity. And this falling in your uh, houses of communication, it wouldn't at all be surprising if you get into some arguments with uh, somebody that you are in a position of mutual trust with, somebody maybe that you share resources with, such as a spouse or a business partner, um, or you know somebody that you owe money to or who owes money to you, like um, maybe your relationship with your bank or your mortgage uh, company, <clears throat> there might be some uh, arguments that come up during this moon and you might find yourself feeling rather stubbornly resistant or, um, you know, uh, passionately vulnerable. So watch out for that stuff. Um, now we've got a shift in season happening as well. On the 19th, the sun moves into the sign of Taurus. <clears throat> Here it is in the end of Aries. And then, boom, it moves into Taurus right there. So it's a change in seasons. Spring is, uh, is continuing. This is a season of flowers and beautiful smells, something that you very much enjoy with your aesthetic sense, Pisces. <clears throat> and that brings the spotlight to house three, which uh, as Julia mentioned, is the house of communication. And by the time the sun arrives there, Venus and Mercury have already paved the way and brought <clears throat> so, much, uh, so much good stuff to this house. So what I'm saying is towards the end of the month, your attention is going to shift away from that big emphasis on your finances when that uh, pile of planets cluster together into Aries in your second house. And the emphasis gonna, is gonna shift to taking practical approaches to communication. And that's the Taurus planets in your third house. Now, Pluto is going retrograde this month, and this is something I've been warning you about in your horoscopes the last couple of months. And I've been saying <clears throat> that the late winter and early spring is the best time all year to begin really big projects. And that's true. And it's still true, except towards the end of April, you're going to see Pluto is going to go retrograde. <clears throat> little RX symbol appears right there, a little red symbol which means that Pluto has gone retrograde. And that's the beginning of a sort of a domino uh, line of planets that will all go retrograde in turn over the coming months into the fall, at which point we have all the planets retrograde at once, which makes it really difficult to start new projects without obstruction. 
So if you can start new things before Pluto turns retrograde on uh, the 27th, so much the better. And conditions aren't like going to suddenly become really bad. It's a gradual thing. It's a sort of a buildup. This is just where that buildup begins. <clears throat> now, if, um, if you have your sun between 24 and 26 degrees of a cardinal sign, which is to say if you were born between about the 14th and 16th of April, July, October, or uh, January, then you would absolutely be having a Pluto transit this year and you would feel it turning retrograde. You would feel like, oh my God, I'm melting down and I'm going through really big changes and I just don't even know who the hell I am anymore. And if you're feeling that way, there is no better time to have a reading because you can find out how long is this thing going to last? What should you do about it? How should you handle those profound feelings of vulnerability and transformation? And how long is it going to last? When's it going to be over? And sometimes that's the best news of all. So if you want that, you can find a link in the YouTube description below. Well, that's all we have for you today, Pisces. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And visit our Pandora Astrology channel on YouTube, where you will find horoscopes and news of the month gathered into playlists. Also visit our website, pandoraastrology.com, where you can find um, monthly forecast and lots of loads and loads, hundreds of free articles. And, um, and your horoscope is there and, um, and you can get a reading or even join a class. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.